Hi, I'm Ida Farman, the research associate at SIPA. Here today with me, we have Teresa Aguilar Ducci, labor economist and the director of SIPA, to discuss the July unemployment numbers. Hi, Teresa. What did we learn today? Um, well, we learned that unemployment rate is still uh, really high. Um, I also look at the job quit rate. The job quit rate, when that's the percentage of, of people who are unemployed who quit their jobs, which is usually pretty healthy. You quit your job because um, you want a better job and you have some power. And we're seeing very low levels of power. The quit rate is 3.5%. In point of comparison, the last recession, which was deeper than any other recession besides this one since the Great Recession in the 1930s, that quit rate in 2010 was 6%. So when things were really bad, um, the percentage of people who were unemployed um, who, because they quit their jobs was 6%, but now we're at 3.5%, which is the lowest indicator of labor bargaining power um, than we've had only second, second lowest, second to last month when it was 2%. So I'm seeing indicators of very, very low bargaining power. So if workers want to um, press their employers to give them health insurance or to actually um, clean up the um, clean up the workplace to prevent the spread of the virus, they have very little power to do that. Thank you. That's a very important point. So the second question is that we know that older workers are more vulnerable to the virus and they're going through a really rough time in this recession. Can you give an update on those numbers and the situation? Yeah, for the, for the first time, the unemployment rate for older workers is higher than for younger workers. Um, Ida, you, you looked at these. Why do you think that is now, whereas before, younger workers were at a disadvantage? Well, they're facing a high uh, health risk and also they might be more expensive to keep on a job for the employers. Right, because of health insurance costs, right? Yes. One other question that comes to mind is, how do you think we are handling the reopening? Do you think it's, it's a smart way or can we do it better? Yeah, or, or just say it, a dumb way. Are we reopening a dumb way or are we reopening in a smart way? Um, well, we could be smarter, Ida. One other place that we look when we look at the unemployment rate is the unemployment rate by sector. And so, um, though it's devastating for those workers, it's good that we have high unemployment in the leisure and hospitality sector, um, in sports events, in, in um, banquet halls. These are, these are dumb ways to promote economic activity. They have low multipliers, meaning the jobs don't pay very well, um, so they don't really add to economic activity. And these are events that help spread the virus. So we want to keep those sectors closed. And I, I would like to see the unemployment rate even higher in those sectors. Of course, those workers need a, an unemployment benefits that supplements the benefits in ordinary times. We, Congress needs to pass that $600 a week unemployment um, benefits. But I'd like to see us being smarter by um, expanding employment in the government sector. And sadly, we saw that unemployment rate in the government sector at 8.5%. I would like to see those rates as low as we see in banking, which is only 4.5%. Government workers are essential now. They're public health workers. They're on the front lines of helping stop the virus. I would like to see waiters and our favorite bartenders being um, retrained to be contact tracers. I would rather see them work. They would rather um, work. Um, and they could um, be mobilized to help fight this virus. But we aren't smart enough um, to make those transitions yet. I look forward to Congress really re-employing re, um, those workers in places that we can stop this virus. Great. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. for being here today. Thank you. And you too.